One of the best things you can do in Pal World to get a massive boost in damage is to use Pal Teams, as in specialized team combos where all of the party mates buff up the damage of one single and very strong Pal. Yes, the sweet combo is by far not the only one and there are many more that significantly boost up the damage even compared to that. Like for example, if you ever wanted an Anubis with 3000 attack or have your first stallion provide an almost 500% boost in damage, that and more is also possible. And I have some amazing examples here to show you, so let's jump right in. But following up on the data mine page we talked about yesterday, as I've said, there are many ways to buff up the damage of your pals and even entire parties. And of course, the B guards and the Swees are not the only ones, though in these cases, they only work for the Sweepas and Elizabeth Bees respectively for providing extra damage to attack and defenses. However, as you can see, there are like 10 extra other pals that provide other types of bonuses, including to different elemental types so spark it for electric damage you can see dumad for earth damage we also have foxicles for ice kelpsy for water and so on and so forth so essentially you can create other combos outside of just that and still get at least that amount of damage if not way way more because as you will see in just a bit we will actually buff the damage on actual top tier damage dealers and pals including of course ones like Anubis, Frostalian, even Jet Dragon and any other max tier that exists right now. But this can literally work with any team combo as long as you build them properly. So let's get started with my favorite which is going to be Anubis. I already got an amazing one from crossbreeding with pretty much every single passive skill I want so that its attack at rank 3 in this case is over 1800 or a passive skill increase of 70% though in reality it's actually 90 because Earth Emperor is counted separately from that page but in reality it still applies to its damage. So the creature that buffs up the damage of Earth Elemental Pals is, you guessed it, Dumad. As long as you keep him in your party, they don't even have to be out, they will increase the attack power of all other ground pals. For example, if I were to place a simple rank 1 in here, it's going to increase the damage of my Anubis by another 10%. If I place a second one, now the total is going to be 90 third one is going to then be a hundred and you pretty much guessed it each and every single one of them provide a 10 percent increase at no rank ups however because those bonuses increase with the rank ups that you provide to do mod what i did is that i farmed the living heck out of them i captured like hundreds upon hundreds so that i could have a few of them to rank four which is going to double the bonus that it just gives so a rank four will instead give a 20 percent bonus to attack for anubis compared to just 10 that they give at no ranks so when you place all four of them all with rank four in this case what you're going to be looking at is at about 150 percent extra damage just for anubis or in this case about 2700 attack power but this is at rank 3 if i were to get a lot more anubises which will take a while that would place us much closer to 3000 maybe even exceed that but all in all this turns him into an absolute beast he's going to absolutely mow down with everything you put in its path even if they are level 50 it doesn't matter this is going to just completely get wrecked so anubis with this absolutely crazy and definitely one of the top tier spots right now but it's not the only one and we can actually even further double this damage but we're gonna have to use a different one instead because we have to take advantage of another boost in damage which is the mounted elemental boost so certain creatures such as Frostalian, Shadowbeak, even Suzaku, Blazemuth, Quivern, they will swap up the element of your character when you attack from their back. They also provide access to their own attacks, but this can also further be buffed by just having some party mates that provide bonuses to that elemental type. Now another one is the Frostalian. This is an even crazier example because if you're lucky enough and get one, for example, that's already pretty decent on the passive skills and doesn't require much breeding, you can take advantage of the fact that it's an alpha and has a ton of HP, like three times the usual Frostalian you get out of breeding, which has only like 5,000. This one has close to 20,000, but obviously you will lose that if you get its offspring. 
So in this case, what we want to do is to buff up the damage and the creature that does so is the Foxical. While in the team, it increases attack power of Ice Pals, which for Stallion absolutely is. The percentage increase is the same as everybody else's, so 10% for each Foxical when they have no rank ups and 20% for each Foxical which is max ranked to number 4. So this means a total of 80% between the 4 Foxicals you can place in your party or 130% in our case since we are lacking, I believe, yeah, in this case the Ferocious perk it would have been 150% or 170 if we take a look at the Ice Emperor which gets counted separately. But um, even so, this is going to then give you close to 2600 attack, which is actually extremely good, plus its ice attacks are very strong. However, you can then double this bonus to 5200, so let me show you. If you further buff up for Stallion and rank him up, this also increases its partner skill called Ice Steed. And in this case, this provides you the mounted elemental damage boost, as in it changes the player's attack type to ice and then enhances ice attacks while mounted. So not only does this enhance the ice attacks on your own attacks that just became ice, but also on Frostalian's own ice attacks while it is mounted. Get it? So what this is, is basically at rank 0, it's only about a 50% increase in damage. So even an unleveled up Frostalian gets a massive boost in damage while being mounted but at full rank 4 it's going to be a hundred percent on top of the one you already got so to show you what i'm talking about when not being mounted for stallion does about 3k damage with the ice attack the ice spike and then about like 2k when he does the charge up ice wings however when i do mount him that turns into about 6k 5 to 6k for each one of them plus it also doubles almost doubles the damage of my attacks which now deal ice damage with the shotgun that i'm using right here but it would convert all other sources of damage that i do from its back to ice as well now one thing you might want to pay special attention to are all of these bonus alpha boss passive skills such as Earth Emperor like the one we saw on Anubis but there are others like Lords of the Underworld, there's Divine Dragon, Ice Emperor and even Lord of the Sea like for example in the case of Jormuntide and all the others too, only the alpha boss out in the wild can have this passive skill right here. You cannot get it if you were to breed two different breeds that don't even have it. So the only way to pass this down on a Jormuntide, for example, is to have an Alpha that has Lord of the Sea already and pass it down to a different Jormuntide with some of the other passive skills that are available to all pals, so Ferocious, Muscle Head, and so on. That is why this can provide a 20% damage increase. You can also go with the Lucky if you want to, but in this case, that's going to be about 5% weaker, so you want maybe to min-max stuff, then you might want to go with the specialized passive skills. Now, it's not worth it to go for these if you already have the lucky and have an almost perfect slot. Don't even bother with it, the time investment might not be worth it. I just wanted to let you know, if you can go for this instead of lucky, you can totally do so and gain the max amount of damage. Now another insane combo is the Toko Toko and Ribbony, but I'm gonna talk about him specifically because he comes with the Egg Bomb Launcher, which is possibly one of the highest damage rocket launchers of sorts in the game, before of course the legendary one you get ultra late. So essentially if you get a hold of one with a ton of cool passive skills, like this one has Ferocious, Musclehead, Legend and Lucky, which I crossbred from all sorts of different breeds and eventually to a lucky one which eventually gave me this variant you can also of course rank it to rank 4 because it's very easy to get toko tokos but um what you can do is also combine this with a ribbony which if you read its description it has the skilled fingers so while in your team it increases the attack power of neutral pals and while in the base it increases the work efficiency if working at the weapon workbench that's also a very good one but essentially we want to boost up this neutral damage which on the toko thingy absolutely works 
So every single ribbon -y gives you a 10% increase or if you bump them to rank 4, it's going to be 20 per each. So at the maximum, you're looking at about 165% extra damage just from this. Now, I could have bumped this up by another 30% on top of everything if I had enough of these souls to also bump this. So once I can do that, this damage is going to turn closer to 10,000. However, I tested this against some of the bosses and as you can see, even like this, it deals about 6, 5.5 to 6k damage for each of the shots sometimes even exceeding that and getting closer to 7k if you do it with headshots which has also a damage multiplier on it but uh, it's absolutely crazy how good this creature is it comes in super early but it's still so absolutely amazing and to make a comparison with the legendary rocket launcher this one is a little bit better but it comes in way way later than this creature there are two more other combos I want to talk about. Shadow Beak and Yormuntide Ignis follow a similar route to Frostalian and Frostalian Noct, so you can achieve this slightly easier than with those two. In the case of the Shadow Beak, I bred one using, of course, an Astagon via a different line. Again, you will see the breeding process in the video I posted yesterday, but um, essentially, I buffed up the damage on the dark abilities it has to insane levels. And then what you can do is to add a bunch of who crates in the party to further increase the dark pal damage by up to 20% or 10% if you don't want to buff them. And then if you also use Shadow Beak as a mount, he also comes with his own ability, which enhances dark attacks while mounted. So if you further buff up and rank him up to four, his uh, modified DNA is also going to further gain another 100% damage bonus. So you can deal 100% damage bonus with the Shadow Beak on top of the 150 to 70 you already get with the other setup. The same goes with your Muntide Ignis. You're going to want to buff up um, its damage with fire abilities. So a Kelp C Ignis is going to help with that or a Ruby works just fine. They both provide the exact same bonus to fire damage and um, in the case of your Muntide Ignis his ability is also to enhance fire attacks while mounted. Anyway, that's about it with the video with some of the highest damage combos in there. Let me know down below which one is your favorite or if you're using different ones. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.